on. So we started with 2%, putting $1,000 in there. In 20 years, we calculated we'd have almost $1,500. I want to know when it doubles. Well, if I started with $1,000, $1,000 times two means I'll have $2,000. So I just want to plug that into my equation. So I'm going to say 2,000 is equal to, and my equation is 1,000 times one plus my interest rate, which we calculated as 1.02, right? 1% plus 2% raised to the power n. And I want to solve this for n to figure out when my money doubles. So to start solving for something like this, it's like a, a present you have to unwrap. Okay, to get to the end, I gotta first get rid of that thousand out front. So I'm gonna divide both sides by a thousand. This is one of my favorite things to do because I get to cancel a bunch of zeros. All right, so a thousand goes into 2,000 two times. So now I have two equals. On this side, a thousand divided by a thousand cancels, gives me a one. One times anything is itself. So on the other side, I just have 1.02 to the power n. Now, if this was 10 to the power n, I could just use the log to solve it. Okay. But it's not 10 to the power, it's 1.02 to the power. My calculator doesn't have a log base 1.02 button on it. So here's how we trick the calculator into doing that with base 10 for us. So we bring up a new page here. We've got switch color to two equals 1.02 to the power n. What we do, it's not a multiplication, but you know how you can take the square root of both sides of an equation? You might've done that sometime in your past. Just like we can take the square root of both sides of an equation, it turns out you can take a logarithm of both sides of the equation. So I'm gonna take log of the left side, so that would be just log of two, on the other side, I'm gonna have log of 1.02 to the power n. And logarithms have this wonderful property that the exponent pops out as a multiple. So this then becomes n times log of 1.02. On the other side, I have log of two. I wanna know what n is, so to break this multiplication, I'm just gonna divide by this thing called log. on both sides. So what is the log of 1.02? Well, it's just some number. I can whip it in my calculator. My calculator will say it's blah, whatever. It's gonna be a small number or somewhere between zero and one. Uh, I'm taking a number and dividing by itself. A number divided by itself is one. One times N is just N. So my answer is whatever log of two is divided by log of 1.02. Now, some of us are a little overzealous in canceling. I love canceling stuff. It so makes my day. So I would love to cross out the word log. If I did that, then this should be the same as two over 1.02. Let's check with my calculator. Um, I'm just gonna say up front, this is bad. Don't do that, right? I'm gonna show you in a minute, they aren't the same thing. You can't just cross out the log, doesn't work that way. So if I go over to my calculator here and I say, hey, calculator, what is the log of two divided by the log of 1.02? It says it's about 35. And on my spreadsheet, it looked like it was gonna happen in about 35 years. So that's reassuring. Now check this out. What if I take two divided by 1.02 and just say, hey, the logs can just be canceled? Totally different results. Right? You cannot cross out the word log. It doesn't work that way. So back to my notes here. Canceling the logs is bad math. The word log does not cancel like division with division. Looks like fun, but it don't work. So we calculated this number right here on our spreadsheet. It was approximately 35, which matched what my spreadsheet told me. So about 35 years later, we doubled.
Now, is that a great answer 35 years later and money will double? Uh, it's not bad, it's a little vague. What money? The thousand dollars. Does it matter if I start with a thousand dollars or not? Huh? I don't know. Let's go back and check that. Let's see. I doubled 1,000 here and got 2,000, but then I divided the 1,000 out and ended up with a two. What does two represent? A double. Did the thousand really matter? Answer is no. If you started with 100,000, doubling it would be 200,000. 200,000 divided by 100,000 is always two. So it turns out for a specific interest rate, the doubling time is the same no matter where you start. Okay, so I'm gonna double check that in my spreadsheet in a second. So it turns out doubling time doesn't depend on the starting amount, it only depends on the rate. Every rate has a special doubling time that goes with it. In this case, no matter how much money you start with, if your savings account increases by 2% per year, 35 years later will always be the doubling point. So if that's true, the next time my money will double would be another 35 years or about 70 years in the future. And I'm pretty sure I had that in my table. Let's see. So 35 years later was pretty close to uh, 11 cents away from double. So my claim is at 70 years, right? 35 plus 35, another 35 years later, I should have about $4,000. So see, 70 years later is pretty damn close to 4,000. Another 35 years later would be what, 105 years in the future? And I should have what, double was two, double again to four, double again would be eight. So 105 should be about $8,000. Yeah, check it out. No matter what you start with at 2%, 35 years later is always the double point. Which is kind of sweet. All right, so we get to take a look at doubling time there. We look at using logarithms to solve for exponents. <clears throat> 